Hey guys, Zach from The Path here. Today I'm talking with Tyler and we are looking at something black, green, and very mean. What is this thing? Uh, this is my Race XT Pivot Switchblade. Uh, I've had it for about six months now and I am loving it. Clearly this bike isn't stock anymore. Why don't you take me through some of the upgrades you've done to this thing? One big upgrade that I did on this thing is upgrade the wheel set. Uh, originally, this thing comes with the M1900 DT Swiss wheels. This one I put on the XM1700 wheel set. Uh, wheels get about a pound lighter, I think. Uh, it goes to the 350 hubs versus a 370, so much more reliable, also lighter. Uh, so I think it was definitely a worth it upgrade in my opinion. I've also got the Performance Fox 36 on this thing. I have been liking how that rides. One of the biggest upgrades in my opinion in terms of how the bike rides is the uh, Wolf Tooth Geo Adjust uh, one degree headset. It definitely, it's not exactly the most noticeable difference when you're looking at the bike, but in terms of like riding the bike, it definitely makes the biggest difference. It, oh, I bet, yeah. Especially for the trails around here, uh, make the bike a little bit slacker, especially when the trail gets steeper. Uh, it, it makes the bike handle, I think, much better. Oh, for around here, we could definitely benefit from having that little bit of slacker adjustment in the front of bikes, simply because of our terrain being a little bit steeper as opposed to a lot of the more flowy trails that you see out of Tempe, where these bikes are from. Exactly. And uh, I just took this thing up to Mammoth, and I, I definitely, I think, noticed the uh, the extra slackness really giving me really giving me help when the trail was getting down into it, super steep, super loose. Just oh, felt felt more controlled. Nice. Yeah. Another significant upgrade that I've done on this thing is put on some Shimano Dior 170 millimeter cranks. I think stock, this thing comes with the Race Face Ride 175 millimeters. I'm um, definitely liking how the shorter cranks ride. Uh, I think it's a definitely a worth it upgrade in my opinion. I think in an ideal world, I'd be running 165s, but those are a little bit tricky to get these days. Uh, so, but anyways, I've been really happy with the 170s and how those have felt so far. Another thing I've done to my bike is put on a 210 millimeter one-up dropper post. I really like being able to get the saddle out of the way when I'm going down. Anyways, I really like being able to get the saddle uh, way out of the way when I'm going down the hill, really get the bike as maneuverable as possible. The really cool thing with one-up dropper post too that I like is their insertion length is really short. So if you're on a bike that you know has a kink in the seat tube, it's super high up, it makes it so you're able to get a longer dropper post on that bike, which is really nice. Yeah, there's been quite a few of us here that have been running these posts for some time now, and their reliability coupled with the easy serviceability of these posts make them a top quality option for a lot of people looking to upgrade. Totally, and the price is unmatched too. You can't beat it. Yeah. Moving up to the saddle, I have the Ergon SM Enduro saddle. Uh, this is my first time running an Ergon saddle and I've been really happy with uh, how it feels. I think there's a lot of value in being able to get a saddle that is correctly sized for your sit bones, especially when you're going on longer rides. You can really start to feel it in your sit bones when your saddle is not the right one for you. For the drivetrain on this thing, I have a SLX uh, group set all around except for the derailleur, which is an XT derailleur. That's how this bike comes. I've actually been pretty happy with how it's performed. Obviously, it's not the super high-end Shimano stuff, but it's pretty reliable. It shifts really well, um, and I've honestly, in the time that I've had this bike, I've kind of beat it up a little bit, and it's it's held up. For the brakes on this thing, I am running the Shimano SLX four-piston brakes. That's what comes stock on this, as well as the drivetrain. Uh, and I've been really happy with how they performed. I had the Shimano XT four piston brakes before, and I feel like the performance difference between the two is pretty minimal. I think these brakes are pretty awesome. For tires, I'm running a Minion DHF on the front and a Minion DHR2 on the rear. And the casing on the rear tire is a double down because as you know, I like to why. hurt rear wheels <laughs> and so do you. Oh yeah. Uh, and to also protect against that, I also have a Cush Core in the rear tire, and that goes a long way in flat protection, uh, and also not having to buy new wheels. It's cheaper to buy a Cush Core than it is to buy new rear wheels. 100%, and it does add a little bit of weight, but a lot of peace of mind as well. Oh yeah. And then to top it off, I've also got the new Santa Cruz Reserve Fillmore valves. I'm really happy with these things. It makes it really easy to seat your tires with a floor pump. Uh, they're no clog, so especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere on a trail and you need to use a CO2 to air your flat tire up, 
Uh, these ones, you don't have to worry about any cloggage in the valve and your tire is going to seat up fine. Whereas with a normal valve, that's a pretty common problem you could have. I was going to say that's probably one of the best things about them. If you end up burping a tire on the side of a trail and all you have is a CO2, a lot of times with a standard tubeless valve, you might have a lot of difficulty to get that beating up back tubeless. You might have to put a tube in it. Exactly. With these guys, I have no doubt any little CO2 could easily blow that tire back up and get it fully reseated on there, which is a huge win. Exactly. And I think the higher flow just naturally with those valves helps with that too. The no clog plus the higher flow. Exactly. Super awesome. You pay a tad bit of a premium for them in terms of how valves are priced, but they last forever. I think it's worth it in my opinion. Lifetime warranty with those also as is standard with Santa Cruz. Exactly. So 100% worth it in my opinion. Awesome. And that's about it for the upgrades I've done on this thing so far. What trails do you find yourself riding this bike on most often? Where do you feel most at home in its terrain? So I live really close to Santiago Oaks, so I'm riding there most of the time. Uh, this bike does really well down a trail named Cactus, which if you guys are not familiar, it's a very flowy, fun trail with a ton of jumps and rock kickers and whatnot on it. But it also holds its own down shoots, which is a steeper, more technical, rockier trail. And it performs amazingly on that trail as well. And to get to either of those trails or any of the other trails there, you have to do a decent amount of climbing and this bike takes those climbs super well. It sounds like you're doing a good balance of both types of main trails that we see, more flow trails, also some good tech trails, kind of doing a good balance between the two. Exactly, it can do both those trails pretty comfortably. Awesome. What made you go with the Switchblade as opposed to a lot of the other bikes out there? And what would make this a good option for a lot of riders that are possibly looking for a new bike? The reason I went with the Switchblade and the reason why I think a lot of other people would be really happy with this bike is because of the characteristics of how the bike rides. It retains quite a bit of poppiness in the rear while also having like a really progressive uh, rear shock setup. So when you're doing gnarlier stuff, if you're doing big drops, it, it ramps up real hard and it really helps prevent bottoming out. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to send bigger stuff, it really tailors to that. And the way the rear suspension works, it has a fantastic climbing platform, mainly due to that DW link and also the shock tune that Pivot has on the shock. Uh, so it makes it climb super well. Um, it also makes it so uh, there's less small bump sensitivity, but that makes it so when you're trying to pop off stuff, trying to hit jumps, it makes it gives you a little bit of a better platform to pop off of, get a little bit higher, uh, which is makes the bike almost want to ride in the air more than it is on the ground, which is super fun. I really like that about this bike. Uh, and then on the fork, it's got 160 millimeters of travel, so it's got enough oomph to do really gnarly trails, take big hits, uh, which is one thing I really, really like about the spike. So it'd be a lot of, it would be good for a lot of riders because it can do both ends of the spectrum very well. It can support riders that want to do gnarly terrain, but at the same time, if that rider wants to ride it a little bit on the tamer side and do a lot of bigger climbs and stuff, they can still do that very well, it sounds like. Exactly, and that's exactly why I bought it too. I can go on longer rides, but it, it's a bike that can also handle gnarlier trails. Mm -hmm. And I've even taken this thing up to Joplin uh, once or twice. And the whole time I felt like, I never felt like the bike was super sluggish up the hill. Cause obviously that's a super long climb, oh, super long, it's brutal terrible. climb. But this bike handled it amazingly. Awesome. For what it is, climbs really well. Sounds like a solid jack of all trades. Totally. As a bike shop employee, I don't think any of us are ever really done upgrading our bikes. So I assume you have some future plans for this bike. What do you have in the work so far? So I do have quite a bit of future upgrades planned. The biggest one so far is I'm gonna be changing out the suspension. I have some of RockShox's new 2023 stuff coming in. The Fox Performance suspension, I've been really happy with, and I think for a lot of riders, uh, it's easier to set up. Uh, it's just as reliable as the higher end stuff. I really liked it, but I'm wanting to try something different. I have the new RockShox Lyric that's coming in for the front and I also have the new RockShox Super Deluxe Coil Ultimate for the rear. So I'm pretty excited to see how that rides, especially because on both those, they did a complete refresh, all new stuff. So I'm really stoked and I'm excited to see how that affects how this bike rides. And I think especially with how the rear suspension is super progressive, I've heard that a coil works really well with this bike. So we'll see how it goes. Awesome, yeah, that sounds like some sweet stuff. Uh, I'm also planning on swapping out these rims with some Santa Cruz Preserve HD rims. I've heard a lot of good things about them, and I have done a little bit of damage to this rear wheel as it is, so I figure I might as well take this opportunity and get these hubs laced to some cooler, different rims. 
and I've never tried them before, so I am very curious to see how they feel. I touched on this a little bit earlier, but I would like to run 165 millimeter cranks on this, and 5Dev has talked about possibly being in the works for a Super Deuce crank set, so if that comes out, I think I'm gonna purchase a pair of those and throw those on and see how those run. Those are some pretty cool looking crakes and I think they'll look really cool on this bike. Another upgrade I have planned is some one-up bars. I've heard a lot of really good things about them. A lot of people here in the shop ride them. Uh, I remember last week you were helping a customer showing them one-up bars and you asked me if I had them on mine and I said no and you got really mad at me. So I decided I needed to buy them and I did. And I just haven't put them on yet, but I am planning on it. I also got those in the 35 millimeter rise variant, and right now I have the 20 millimeter rise bars, so I'm curious to see how that'll affect how the bike rides as well. And then one last upgrade that I'm also planning on is going with a shorter stem. I think I'm gonna go with Industry 9 stem, possibly in red. I might run an Industry 9 stem in red and a red super deluxe coil and go with a little bit of a Christmas theme. Be a little bit interesting look, yeah. yeah. But I guess, I guess we'll see how it goes. But Industry 9 makes 32 millimeter stems, so I think I'm gonna try that out. I believe I have a 50 mil on it right now, so I'm curious to see how that'll uh, affect how this bike rides for me as well. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in for today's Bike Chuck with Tyler and I. If you guys wanna see any more bike related content, go ahead and hit us up online, pathbikeshop.com. Hit us up on our socials, Facebook, Instagram. Got a ton more content on there for you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, we'll see you later.